How's it going everybody? I'm Noah, this is Madison Angling, and in today's video we are going to be talking about planer boards and the different ways I like to set up my different planer boards for different types of fish and different techniques. So what are planer boards? Pretty simply, planer boards are basically clipped onto your line and they're used to spread the lines away from the boat while you're trolling. And they do a couple of things. One, they serve as a bite indicator because a lot of times you'll see the flag go down and the board drop back, but they also work to keep your lines spread away from each other so you're not crossing lines. You can also get your boards way away from the boat so you don't spook really spooky fish that are either up shallow or high in the water column. They are a very, very useful tool when it comes to trolling. And it seems like a lot of people are very intimidated by using them, but in reality, they're very simple. And once you get the hang of it, you'll wonder why you never trolled with planer boards before. So today we're just gonna talk about how I set up my different boards, why, and give you a little insight into my methods behind the madness. So getting started here, we're gonna start with this guy. This is the Offshore Tackle Mini Board. It's cute, right? Look at that thing. Compared to the regular OR12 side planer, it's a dinky little board, but it packs a major punch. So the reason I have these things, and I always keep at least a half dozen of them in my boat, is because these are a butt saver. What I mean by that is on days when things just aren't going well and we just need to cover water to catch some fish, but oh no, we didn't bring our trolling gear, we don't have planer board rods, we don't have our big planer boards, what are we going to troll with? These guys work awesome and they work great because you can use them on conventional tackle. You can use them on a spinning rod or a bait caster. You can use these on anything. Heck, we've even caught fish with ice rods using these. Long story, but it works. And the point is you can use anything with these mini planer boards. And what's really cool about these is this. They're reversible. So I can use the same board to fish either side of the boat, which is fantastic. And they break down super tiny. This is a tiny little planer board. So you can afford to put these somewhere in your boat and keep them in here all the time. So you always have a planer board, which is really handy sometimes. And the way I have these guys set up, I have the yellow, very light tension release here on the arm. And I have the red OR16 planer board release here on the back. This is the heavy tension one with the little pin in the middle. And the reason I have it set like that is so as this guy's kind of cruising along and a fish grabs it or, uh, you know, we get snagged or something, you can pop the line. You give the rod a sharp pop, that front clip will let the line go. And then that red clip on the back is pretty much permanently attached to the line until you remove it, which allows the board to hang straight back. And what that does is it allows you to fight the fish or get the line unsnagged without having to fight the planer board, which is sometimes a really good way to lose a fish. So that's why I have these rigged up this way. Uh, this red clip ensures that this is not gonna come off your line and that front yellow one allows you to pop the board. And uh, it, it just couldn't be more simple. These do have some limitations though. Generally speaking, you're not gonna be able to fish these in very big water and you're not gonna be able to pull very big baits with these. They're just too small for that. But they work great for panfish and the other light trolling applications. So like I mentioned before about these kind of being a day saver, uh, they work great for pulling small crankbaits. So I almost always have a small assortment of smaller crankbaits in my boat, whether it's, you know, floating rapalas, some shadow wraps, some husky jerks, some salmo hornets, you know, flicker shads, things like that. You can pull those on these just fine. As long as it's not too choppy, these work great. And uh, they're, they're a great multi-species board as far as inland waters go. Bass, walleye, even pike, and of course panfish, these things are phenomenal. So these definitely deserve a spot in your boat, especially if you're learning how to fish with planer boards and you're not really ready to get out and do some serious walleye fishing, but you just kind of want to get comfortable with how the, the concept works. These are very affordable, they're very versatile, you'll have them forever, and I promise you, you will find a use for these. So next up in our lineup is the OG. This is the original OR12 Offshore Tackle Side Planner. This is the do-all planner board of all the boards we're talking about here today. And uh, for good reason, these things are the perfect size to handle just about anything, whether you know, you are trolling for panfish or like most people, you know, we're trolling for walleyes or if you're going for big fish, you're trolling for muskies, you're trolling for salmon. The OR12 is kind of the industry standard as far as any one single planer board goes. You can do anything with these. Uh, I use them for walleyes and muskies and salmon and Great Lakes trout. 
Uh, these are kind of my go-to workhorse planer boards. In fact, this exact planer board was one of the two planer boards I bought back in high school when I first started learning how to use them. I've had this thing for almost 15 years now and it's just fantastic. Of course, I've upgraded a couple things on it, but it's still the original board. The thing runs great. They're indestructible. You'll have these for a lifetime. So let's go through real quick how I like to set these up and a few rigging options for how you can set your OR12s up. So on my walleye boards, I like to have mine set up like this. So I have the OR18 snapper release here on the front of the board, which is a really nice, quick, one-handed release that has adjustable tension on it. So you can use braid, you can use mono, you can use pretty much any kind of line you like in here. This thing will grab it with just a little adjustment with a Phillips head screwdriver. I have this rigged up with the tattle flag system. So I have the spring attached to the flag, which tells me if I have debris on my line or if I have a fish and it's just a really light bite and the board didn't drop all the way back. So that's also a really handy tool. And on my back release, I have the medium tension orange offshore release here. Now there's so many different ways you can rig these. Uh, take everything I'm saying with a little bit of a grain of salt because really the possibilities are endless and it all depends on what you're trying to accomplish with your boards. So another option is this. This is a truly one-handed option for removing planter boards in which you put two medium tension, these are the orange releases on the arm of your planter board and you can actually one-handed release the planer board. Now, the only thing that kind of stinks about this is the fact that you lose the ability to use the tattle flag, but if the tattle flag isn't something that's necessary for your style of fishing, not a big deal. These work phenomenally well if you're fishing by yourself or fishing with people that maybe don't have a lot of experience with planer boards and uh, you know need to be able to very easily remove it with very minimal explanation. These work great for that. So this is a cool way to rig them as well. Another way you can set these up is uh, to basically to pop the board. And uh, we're gonna have videos later on explaining how all this stuff works uh, and seeing it in action. But essentially what we mean by that is very similar to what we're doing with the mini boards where uh, when we hook up, we want that front of the board to pop and the board swings back, disengages, and you're no longer fighting the board. And that works really, really well for big fish. Now, I prefer that for when I'm fishing for salmon and muskies and Great Lakes trout. I don't particularly care for that for walleyes. I don't like that quick uh, loss of tension between uh, you know, the board and the fish and the rod. I'm not a big fan of that, but with a big fish that's pulling really hard, it's a very quick lapse of, uh, of tension, if you will, and I'm not so worried about it then. But again, it all depends on your style of fishing. Everybody fishes differently, and that's what's cool about these offshore boards is how customizable they are. Uh, any combination of releases and boards and tattle flags, anything you can think of, you can make happen with these boards. So this is also an OR12 planer board, but I have this rigged up as one of my salmon and musky boards. And one of the big differences here again, is that I wanna be able to pop this board. So on my front release here, I have the Sam's Pro release. This thing's really cool. You can wrap the line around this little rubber uh, washer here, snap the, the release shut here with an adjustable screw so you can adjust the tension on it. And when a fish hits it or you wanna pop the board, you just give the rod a hard jerk the release pops open, let's go of the line, and then the board swings back on this rear release, and you're no longer fighting the board, it's just floating in line, and it's totally out of the way, not an issue. The only way that you're gonna be able to get away with that is having some kind of a release on the back of the board that is not gonna let go. So whether it's one of these OR18 snapper releases or the way most people do it is these red OR16 releases with the pin in the middle of it. That will ensure that this does not come off of your line and uh, you're not chasing planer boards all over the place. But this is what I use for my big fish applications on big water. This is my musky, salmon, and big trout boards. They're awesome. They work great for um, any kind of heavy duty use. And that's one thing to add with these two. If you're gonna be fishing with super lines or braid, the Sam's Pro release and the OR18 snapper release are awesome for braided lines. They work really, really well for that. In fact, I would argue much better than any of the other offshore releases. So if you're gonna be fishing big water, and especially if you're gonna be using super lines, make the investment in getting the heavier duty releases. You'll thank me later. Now, the last board we're gonna talk about is this guy. This is the big dog. This is the SST mag compared to our mini board and even our, our, our wow, tongue twister. And even compared to our OR12, 
That is a big stinking planer board. Now this guy I have rigged exactly the same way as my other salmon and musky boards, kind of my general purpose heavy duty boards. I've got our Sam's Pro in the front here, as well as our red heavy tension OR16 release in the back. And this is a big stinking board. Now, why do you need a board this big? The truth is, if you're fishing a lot of inland waters, you probably don't. But what's nice about these is if you do go offshore, let's say you're fishing Great Lakes salmon, or you're doing some musky trolling and you're pulling really big baits and you've got a pretty good spread of lines out, I like to run these on my outside boards or depending on how many lines out I have, maybe uh, you know my two planer boards. If I'm fishing for salmon and I'm pulling really big heavy lines, 10 color lead core, 300 copper, things like that, that pull really hard, especially in relatively larger waves, these boards don't want to skip and jump across the waves like an OR12 does. So I'm not saying that the OR12 can't do it because they definitely can, but in certain applications, it's nice to have a little more planing power and that's where this SST mag comes into play. I don't use these all the time, but when the conditions call for it, these are a great way to make sure your presentation is staying firmly planted to the water, not skipping across anything. You're always in control of what this board line is doing and they work phenomenally well for big fish. You're probably not going to go out and do a lot of walleye trolling with these unless you're out on like Lake Erie or you know somewhere where you're pretty regularly fishing very nasty big water and, uh, and catching very very big fish but this is also a great option uh, if you're you know again Great Lakes fishing, salmon fishing and uh, fish regularly on kind of nasty water. So if I had to pick one of these boards though the do all, the one board that can do everything, it's got to be this guy, the OR12. And frankly, I'd keep it rigged up just like this. Um, you know, I've caught salmon and trout and muskies rigged just this the same way. Uh, you know, even with the front clip not popping, um, you can catch plenty of fish on these. So how you rig these boards is completely up to you. And that's what's really fun about this. And Offshore Tackle makes it really easy. They have all kinds of different releases available. So again, whether you want something that hangs on a little more permanently, something that can pop, whatever it is you want your boards to be able to do, Offshore's got you covered. So I will have all of these products linked in the description below. Be sure to go check them out. If you are in the market for planer boards and you're not sure which brand to get, I can promise you making the investment now and going with the Offshore Tackle Boards is an investment that's gonna pay off time and time again, year after year. These things are pretty much indestructible. Again, I've had this particular board for almost 15 years and it gets fished all the time. And the thing works great. There's so many cheaper, inferior options on the market. Do yourself a favor, get the original, get the offshore boards. You will not be disappointed. Make the investment. It's the investment of a lifetime. You'll have these forever. And hopefully we made a little bit of sense of these planer boards, kind of what they're suited for. And uh, hopefully my way of rigging these was at least a little bit helpful and gave you a starting point, at least as far as where you might think you want to start rigging your planer board. So hopefully you guys found this video useful. And please, in the comments, if you have any questions, drop them below. We'd be happy to answer them. Or if you have different ways that you like to rig planer boards that are kind of specific for your type of fishing, feel free to share them below. I'm sure anybody watching this video is going to be curious. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We'll see you guys on the next video.